Thank you, David, and thank you, Shangjin, for this kind invitation. Um, you know, President Obama very recently actually visited India, and uh, one of the things that he repeatedly said at, at least three to, to three different audiences was that people say that, oh, India is an emerging power, but we don't think India is an emerging power. We think India has actually emerged. Um, is India a, a power now, therefore? Uh, I think the president was being generous, partly. Uh, 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 he certainly was out there to, to uh, uh, raise the uh, relationship uh, between India and the United States to a much higher level. Uh, there had been kind of this unease on the part of the Indian side that after President Bush, uh, the uh, uh, rapport had kind of uh, uh, loosened up a bit, and, and, uh, and somehow the president had uh, let the ball drop. So he certainly wanted to come to that. I think he was also reacting, perhaps, uh, uh, to, to the uh, way the Chinese uh, uh, rise has been, and, and in, in particular, the way, at least you know, in some of the recent dealings, China has emerged more as a rival balanced power, and so, you know, and, and at the same time, Japan, which has traditionally provided the counterbalance, has been a bit more acquiescent, so perhaps, you know, the president is also looking for some sort of geopolitical balance, uh, rebalance, and sees in India a, a, a possible uh, balancing power. Uh, reason I say, I, I think, you know, on the whole, this was a generous statement, was that India is still largely a very poor country. Um, uh, it is, uh, uh, per capita income uh, is a little more than $1,000. Uh, if you look at its ranking uh, on per capita terms, it's about 161st. Even by GDP ranking, actually, currently India looks 11th largest country in the world. Um, in, the, uh, in terms of the share of uh, the world GDP, India is about two and a half, less than 2.5%. Uh, merchandise trade is less than 2%, services maybe 3%. So it really, you know, if you look at the existing, uh, the current uh, uh, parameters, uh, you would ask, you know, why is all this hype uh, and, and what the hype is about? I think, you know, there, there is a reason for the hype, uh, and that is that it is a very rapidly growing economy uh, with very good prospects of this growth continuing. Uh, th th this. Of course, you know, what Charlie said uh, today uh, is, is, is something to worry about, uh, to which maybe I'll come to uh, briefly. Um, India has grown in the last seven years particularly. It has been growing on a longer term basis about 20 years or so at 6%. But in the last seven years, India has been growing about uh, 8 to 9%. Uh, even actually after the crisis uh, uh, starting in September 2008, uh, India's growth rate really didn't decline very much. It declined some. It went down to about 6.5% immediately, uh, then rose up to 75 It's now back, uh, if you look at the last two quarters, to close to 9%, between 8.5%, 9%. It's a very rapidly growing economy. This is in terms of the real rupees. But if you actually take account of the fact that rupee has been appreciating, uh, the growth rate in real dollars of India in the last seven years has been about 12%. Project that a bit. Now, I'll make a case, actually, that, that this, uh, the, the, barring some of the collapse, that if, if there is a collapse, actually, in Europe, uh, that the country will actually grow over the next 10, 15 years uh, at, at current rates, for sure, could actually grow faster. You project that. Uh, today, India is about $1.3 trillion. Um, even take 10% growth rate in real dollars. That makes the economy in about 15 years uh, about five and a half uh, trillion dollars. Today, it is 11th uh, in ranking, depending on how Japan does in the next 15 years. Uh, this would take India to about uh, third position. Uh, uh, and if Japan grows a little bit uh, over these 15 years, it will be a close fourth. Um, that, I think, is the promise of India, really, that you know, it, 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 in a very short period of time, uh, it will grow, it will be very large. Side by side, of course, the Chinese economy is growing. So even, I mean, I've done some very back of the envelope calculations, even if China, let's say, grows 6% over the next 15 years. India and China together, by about 20, 25, become as large as the United States. That's, that's quite uh, a shift. And then if you add Japan from Asia, actually, uh, that really puts the center of gravity 
uh, of the global economy to Asia. So, so that really does make India very important. There's another uh, point of view from which I think India is going to be very important, which uh, uh, we, we often uh, miss out. And that is the fact uh, that, uh, that that has to do with the demographic, demographic transition. Uh, if you, uh, and, and unlike, you know, some of the other uh, uh, predictions that we do, uh, there is a little bit of this astrological uh, element in everything we do and when, when we uh, make these predictions. Demographic ones are, are certainly much more reliable uh, because, you know, how the population, particularly in the working age group, is going to evolve, that population is already there. Uh, anybody between 0 and 15 is going to get into the workforce pretty much very, uh, uh, in, in, in the next, 20, uh, next 15 years. So the predictions are actually on demography that uh, China and the developed countries together would actually be minus 100 million people in the age group from 20 to 50. India will be plus 130 million. So you would see a lot of people, lot, many more people like me around you uh, 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 in, in the next 15 years. And, and I, see don't, I don't mean this just you know, in, in terms of India will have a lot of people, but perhaps given the degree of globalization that exists and the way it's proceeding, uh, I think you will see them here. Uh, uh, simply because I think you know the, 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 there is going to be uh, this uh, uh, space created by the declining uh, young population in, in the developed countries, and, and China certainly is not going to be the supplier of that. Even today, there are as many as 300,000 Indian students actually studying between UK, United States, and Australia. So that's that's a very large number. That's going to grow. China also supplies about, in fact, uh, in the United States now. This year, China has exceeded India uh, in terms of supplying the students. But whatever demographic transition is happening, I think you'll see a hell of a lot more Indian students coming here. So I think that's going to be a major, major uh, change as well that, that we are going to observe. Uh, now, briefly, let me just say where, you know, where I'm coming from, why I think Indian economy will continue to grow. Uh, now, even if it, it seems to me, actually, that, that what we have observed soon after the crisis and in, in, in about the last two years, uh, unless there is a collapse in Europe or it also uh, spills over into the U.S. economy beginning to decline, I think China and India will be able to sustain their growth. Um, uh, at least that's, that's what, is, what we observe currently, that you know, both of these economies have, have moved up. Uh, to their uh, steady state growth paths on which they, they, they were. Um, uh, and and, and uh, for India, therefore, I, uh, you know, barring a collapse, uh, a couple, there are three or four reasons very much working in that direction. Savings rate in India is extremely high, about 35% now of the GDP. Uh, it is likely to, to stay could actually rise. Uh, it is a very open economy, so therefore uh, it, it is actually benefiting from the usual kind of productivity gains that uh, economies that start at a very low level and then kind of move up. Uh, 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 it, it is a highly competitive economy uh, because you know most, most of the major suppliers of the products, efficient suppliers, are all out there against whom the entrepreneurs of the country have to compete. Uh, and uh, uh, for the, 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 the working age. Uh, Population is going to rise, so you know dependency ratios in India are going to decline quite dramatically. We should further actually work towards raising the savings rate as well. Uh, and finally, I think you know, India also has a very uh, substantial entrepreneurial class, which is which is extremely uh, uh, dynamic. Uh, uh, that has been a long tradition, uh, going back to uh, uh, certainly a few hundred years, maybe longer. Uh, uh, India still needs to undertake a bunch of reforms, uh, 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 which, if undertaken in my view, actually will accelerate the growth of it further. Uh, 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 there are issues of higher education, with this population coming through, then there are issues of uh, labor markets, issues of land acquisition for industrialization and so forth, but we can kind of address those. Uh, uh, but, but my take is that uh, if the world economy at least remains stable, uh, if uh, uh, even if India kind of stays where it is, uh, 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 it, it is going to continue to grow about eight, nine, ten percent. Uh, and if it does undertake some of these reforms, it will probably accelerate to twelve or thirteen. Thank you.